The best way to start any new project is to design your data model. Because once you've got that correct, you'll find the rest of your app flows smoothly from there. Now in Swift Data, all our models are created entirely using code. If you used Core Data previously, you can kiss goodbye to the old GUI model editor thing going on there. Now everything is just pure Swift code. For this project, we're going to create a simple model to describe a destination, one place the user might go and see. So press Command N to make a new Swift file here, then press Next, and call this thing destination.swift, and press Create. Inside here, I'll say we have a class called destination with a name string, the name of the place they're visiting, then details about that place, any extra description about it, a date property for when they arrive, and then a priority integer. We'll be using numbers here between one and three for the priority, low, medium, and high. Now, yes, this is a class, just like we had with core data, and that is intentional. Even though, of course, we're big fans of structs in Swift and SwiftUI, we ultimately have to have a way to pass data around our app so that when you change it here, it also changes here at the same time. Now, in this case, it's a class. That means we've got to give it an initializer. And so anywhere in your, uh, your class, just press I and I have Xcode fill in for you, like that. And I'm a big fan of providing default values where they make sense. And when you make a new empty destination, basically everything's default. There's no name, no details, no date, whatever. So I'll just say up here, name is an empty string by default. Details, empty string. Date can be now, the current date. And priority, I'll use two. So middle priority, not too low, not too high. So far, this is all basically standard Swift code, but now it's time to take on Swift data. This is exactly three steps. First things first, I wanna add an import here, top of destination.swift for Swift data, like that. I want that same line of code in the itorapp.swift file as well. So over here, step one, adding imports of data. Step two, in destination.swift, you want to add the model macro before this class here. So I'll say at model class destination. And three, we're gonna add a view modifier to our window group when our app launches. So in itorapp.swift, we're gonna say this window group has model container for destination.self. And that's it. That those three changes, all of which are trivial, give us a complete Swift data stack. It's quite remarkable. First one, simple enough, add import Swift data where you want to use it, that's fine. So we get all of Swift data's functionality. But the other two changes are much more interesting. We had this uh, at model thing before our class. This is a macro that tells Swift data we want to be able to load and save destination objects inside its permanent storage. And that adds a whole bunch of functionality behind the scenes so uh, Swift data can detect when we add destinations, modify them and so forth see what's happening here and making sure they automatically get saved behind the scenes. But it also does some really clever things like loading and saving data lazily behind the scenes. That's our model. Then we have this model container modifier here. And this tells with data that we want to uh, create the storage for the destination object or load it if it was created separately, like a previous run, for example and then use that storage for all the data inside our whole window group, which for us is our entire app. Now, if you've used core data previously, this model container is equivalent to an NS persistent container, but also doubles up as an NS persistent cloud kit container if you have iCloud enabled for your app. You can, if you want to, run the app now, just press Command R to build and run, but honestly, there's not much point because We've written no UI code so far. We're just gonna see a regular sort of what is a default view. Uh, where is it? Content view. We'll see, we'll see that basically. There you go. Um, things are happening behind the scenes. You know, Swift is now working for us, but there's no UI code yet. Let's fix that next.